Okay, so this question says, if x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to this big uh, complex fraction here? So a couple of things about this question. First of all, it's a very short question, only two lines, which means that we're probably going to need to simplify. Um, also, all of the answer choices have the variable x, which typically means that you can look at using the strategy plug in your own number. And that's going to be the strategy that we use here, I prefer at least, instead of simplifying this complex fraction, which you know we technically could do by getting a common denominator between these two here, combining this into a single fraction, and then simplifying until we find out what it matches with down below. But instead of doing all that, I am going to show you how to use plug in your own number. So we're told that x is greater than 3, so I'm going to say, I'm going to just set x to equal 4. Okay. So let's see what happens when x is 4. This is how plug in your own number works. I'm going to choose this number 4. I'm going to plug it in to the expression in the question. I'm going to solve that, get an actual quantity. And then I'm going to test um, my answer choices by plugging in 4 there as well to see what matches to what I got from plugging 4 into the original question. So when I do that, I get 1 over 1 over 6, because 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 over 7, because 4 plus 3 is 7. When I combine the bottoms, um, I would want to get to 1, first of all, it's not changing. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7, the common denominator between 6 and 7 is 42, which means I would have to make 1 over 6 become 7 over 42, multiplying top and bottom by 7. And I'd make the second fraction 6 over 42, again, multiplying top and bottom by 6. And that would lead my bottom fraction to being a total of 13 over 42. So I'd have 1 over 13 over 42. Now a lot of students get mixed up with questions like this that have two fraction bars. So the way that you can deal with this, first of all, the easy or the shortcut way is just to write it as a reciprocal, meaning that the 42 goes up on top of the, of the 13. So I'd have 42 over 13 as an answer. Another way to think of this, however, is I have 1 divided by 13 over 42. And again, anytime I'm dividing a fraction, I can keep the first value the same, change my division into multiplication, and then have the reciprocal of the second fraction, which again will just give me 42 over 13. Okay, so that's the value that I get by plugging in x is 4. So let's look at the answer choices. So if I put 4 into the answer, so I'm going to just make some more space for myself by erasing all this. I know that I got 42 over 13. So if I put in 4 to answer choice A, I would get 8 plus 5 over, and honestly, I'm not going to even test this part because I get 13 as a numerator. I know that I want 13 to be my denominator, so A is no good. For choice B, I see that same 2x plus 5 that was in the numerator for choice A. It's now in the denominator, so I know that my denominator will be 13. So I want 42 up top. Again, I'm looking at the other answer choices. I'm really feeling good about choice B because C and D C nor D are fractions, and I know that I want to have a fraction, but we'll continue just for uh, example's sake. If I put 4 in, I get 4 squared is 16, plus 5 times 4 is 20, plus 6. 20 plus 6 is 36, 36 plus 6 is 42, and I, get, I leave off here with 42 over 13, which is exactly what I was looking for it to be. So B is the best option here. Um, just to show you as well how you could just use simplify instead of plugging your own number. Let's just again erase and give some space here. So if I decided to simplify this question, which is a perfectly fine um, option, especially if you're really good with uh, simplifying fractions like this, I could just take the original and write and say I have 1 over now this 1 over x plus 2 and x plus 3 the common denominator there would be 
x plus 2 times x plus 3, which would mean that I'd need to multiply the left fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. So I'll just give myself some more space. So I'd have x plus 3 over x plus 2 times x plus 3 plus, and I multiply this fraction by x plus 2 over x plus 2. So I'd have x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. And again, that's all under my 1. So the reason why I get a common denominator is so that I can combine these fractions together. So I'd end up with x plus 3 plus x plus 2 all over x plus 2 parentheses x plus 3 close parentheses again all over 1 x plus 3 plus x plus 2 I would have um, 2x plus 5 when I combine the like terms there right so x plus x gives me 2x 3 plus 2 gives me 5 and then of course I'd still have my x plus 2 over x plus 3 underneath that. I'm going to simplify that because I don't see it factored in my answer choices. So I'm going to just expand that trinomial through FOIL. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is plus another 2x. And 2 times 3 becomes plus 6. So what I'm left with here is 1 over 2x plus 5 over x squared. The 3x plus 2x will become 5x, so x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, based upon the rules that I showed you before, this just means that my final answer should be that this x squared plus 5x plus 6 goes up into my numerator, leaving 2x plus 5 as my denominator. So I should have x squared, oh, I'm sorry, x squared plus 5x plus 6 all over 2x plus 5, again, which is choice B. So my preference here, again, is plugging your own number. I just like that strategy a lot, and it helps me to visualize things without just dealing with variables. However, as you can tell, you can use simplify if you'd like. It really is just up to you.